Taylor Gartland, working with Matt Pridmore and Clay Robinson on this semester's uh, Advanced Motorsports Instrumentation Data Logging System. For this, everything was purchased on Amazon. We were using a Raspberry Pi 3B that we opted to use the SenseHat to assist with uh, acceleration data uh, to view and display all the information and used for coding. We have an LCD 5 inch HDMI powered screen. And then to actually do the coding, we purchased a Bluetooth enabled uh, keyboard and that will enable programming. For the data acquisition component, we purchased a OBD general length uh, OBD2 adapter to USB that will be plugged into the OBD ports or the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. In those ports, we will also plug in our USB GPS sensor that will be placed um, probably on the roof of the car for easier satellite. And then we have a HDMI connector for the screen and a generic um, cigarette auxiliary uh, power cable to actually power the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is programmed using a Linux-based Python code. The um, one that we bought came pre-set or pre-loaded with the Noobs operating system. We opted for the full Raspbian code which we downloaded from the Pi website and programmed onto the SD card. And then using the provided directions off of uh, our Professor McAlpine's GitHub page, we downloaded and installed all of the, um, I guess the OBD and GPS data logging software. Okay, here we are now looking at downloading and loading the Pi with the data acquisition system. Uh, if you go to Google and just type in Raspbian, uh, we just click on the first link here with the Raspberry Pi. And this is the file here that we just downloaded and then flash that onto the SD card. This is the operating system for the Pi itself. And then using this operating system, when it's loaded, we went to the GitHub page. Oh, let me go back here. And just go to Google GitHub Max Boost, and it'll bring up the GitHub page for Mac McAlpine. And then on the pinned uh, repository here, the OBD section, and if you pull up the doc file, in here there's the uh, actual Word document and a PDF version, and pulling up the PDF version has detailed instructions on a step-by-step -step process of downloading the operating system. Uh, this particular one is Noobs. We did Raspbian on ours. Uh, they're very, very similar, just some minor differences, but here's the step-by-step -step on how to download it and then uh, ensuring that these certain uh, configurations are set up properly. And then from here uh, is the actual process for downloading the OBD and uh, GPS data loggers. And that's pretty much the basis. Um, we had to do it once we downloaded it, we had to do some debugging uh, for each particular vehicle. Um, that kind of is a, a trial by error on how you have to modify the code to get to work with your exact vehicle. But that's pretty much what we did with the code. I'm Matt Fridmore uh, for MEGR3092 working with Taylor Gartland and Clay Robinson. So 
after Taylor spoke to you about what all was involved with the pie and how we downloaded Raspbian and then uh, GitHub slash MacBoost OBD Pi. Now we're in the car setup. This is already set up. This red cable right here is actually going to the OBD. This secondary cable is going to the GPS, which we're just setting on the dash right now. This is the HDMI, which is hooked up to the five inch screen. And I'm gonna supply power through this right now through the auxiliary power or cigarette lighter. So you can see the screen cut on and also the sense hat cut on. So this is my home screen. This right here is the terminal. If you open up the terminal, After downloading everything, you can check to make sure that it's connected. So for GPS, you can check your GPS by C GPS. So that's showing that the GPS is connected and working. We're going to go back into our terminal. Now we're going to check for our OBD. So we can go to CD Pi OBD dash Pi sudo su and Python OBD underscore GUI dot PY. Now this is connecting to the OBD. And this will show our digital gauges. So you can see um, calculated load values, uh, your coolant temperature, your fuel trims. You can scroll left and right. So you can see engine RPM. Obviously we're not moving, so the mile per hour is zero, but by giving it a little bit of gas, you can see the engine RPM change. So we're going to escape out of this. If I can escape. Okay, we're going to open the terminal back up. So, to start logging data, we're going to start off with CD Pi OBD Pi. Again, sudo su. And we were actually able to get it to log GPS and OBD at the same time by changing the code. Uh, the biggest issue with the code is the automatic protocol. You can manually enter your protocol if you search for uh, your ELM commands, your AT ELM commands, and you can specifically put in your car. This is an 06 Cadillac Escalade. I did an automatic ELM search, so I used ATSP0, but you can change it in the code um, underneath your serial protocols. But to start logging, we're going to use Python OBD GPS log 17.bak. This is a backup file. Uh, this is one that I modified to work for this truck. When I hit enter, you'll see it the pi. It scrolls get data. Going back to the screen, you can see that the GPS is setting up on the hertz. It's now connecting to the Elm connector and it's going into idle mode. So on the Sense app, you can actually click on this small joystick right here. It's, if you click up, 
this goes into logging mode. All right, now to cancel this, and you can see right here also that it's logging on OBD and GPS. So to click down, that cancels the log. So to look at our data that we just collected, You can go to your accessories and then file manager. Go to your PyOBD Pi folder and underneath the logs, it'll be this last folder. You can see the OBD starting out with RPM 566. We weren't moving at this time, so speed is zero. Uh, you can scroll across the bottom to see the remainder of the GPS data. And that is how you collect both GPS and OBD data at the same time on the Pi OBD Pi program through Python. So once you got the data collected on the Raspberry Pi, um, it'll output into a text file. And um, you open it up, you can see it's just a comma separated file. And um, it's got the OBD2 data and the GPS data all synced up in time. Um, so all the data points are taken at the same sample rate and everything like that. So it all matches up. So when you try to open it in Excel, um, all you got to do is go into the import from CSV um, and it'll automatically populate the spreadsheet for you. You can see it's got all the columns laid out and everything all nice. Um, and then uh, the only uh, hard part about that is you got to manually do all the graphs, um, which is not that bad. Um, but if you look here, I've got the OBD2 versus GPS speed, and I've overlaid the throttle position. Um, but if you look, just compare the GPS versus the OBD2, um, you can see they're pretty close. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here on the way down. Um, and then at the beginning, right when, right before the quarter mile or uh, eighth mile run, when you see the, the hop up here in the OBD2, that's the staging, and then it stationary for a little while before the start, but the GPS is kind of hopping around a little bit. Um, could be just that the the box was moving around in the car. Um, but yeah, you see right here that the, as soon as the throttle position goes up to the wide open throttle, the car starts accelerating. As soon as the throttle drops off, it starts slowing down. So that's pretty much what you'd expect on there. Um, and you can, you can graph all all of these things, um, but I feel like the RPM, mile per hour, throttle position were probably the, the best data sets. You can see that the acceleration, uh, accelerometer data wasn't very good. It was really choppy and um, noisy. Um, and we, we didn't really have the, the accelerometers calibrated at all. So, it, this doesn't necessarily mean linear or um, longitudinal acceleration here. This is just um, what the X axis recorded. Um, but yeah, that's that's if you want to look at it in Microsoft Excel, you can also use a program called Megalog Viewer. Uh, it's free to download um, as long as you only have 500 lines of data. So if you're doing eighth mile stuff, quarter mile stuff, you're probably fine. Um, but it, uh, it automatically imports the 
same text file and then um, it's got all the data points that you've recorded down here in the bottom and then on the left hand side on these graphs you can put whatever you want on here and uh, you can see the graphs pretty much the same shape as the Excel graphs obviously um, but one of the nice features of this is this blue line here um, you can see right here in the bottom that it traces all the data um, so the color will match up that's the throttle matches up to green here so you can kind of step through it with the arrow keys and it will show you the value for each of these um, data points as you move along here which is pretty cool and then uh, it's got multiple graphs set up so you could graph any of these data points on the same axis um, and it's all versus time uh, and you can probably go in and change that but uh, that's that's the makes the most sense right here but you can see the accelerometer data is just noisy and all over the place so I don't, I don't think the um, since hat accelerometers were very well suited towards data acquisition they're probably more for gaming and stuff like that if you wanted to use it as a ipad um, move it around and have the screen move around when you move it with the game that might work but yeah for this not that great um and uh there's since it's a csv there's a ton of other uh programs you can use to look at this stuff you can use motec you can use um pi you can use mclaren atlas if you want to um there's just a uh, pretty much infinite number of stuff you can do with a csv file but um this is just a couple ways you can do it